Hi everybody, my name's Kay, you're watching Amidst the Grey, and today, I've brewed up a little something special, <clears throat> and I'm going to introduce a new tag of my own creation called hashtag coffeehouse decks. Let's do it. <laughs> This is probably going to be one of the most ridiculous things I've ever done, but I'm going to do it anyway because I just I just want to. I love seeing all of these super creative tarot tags. They just make me so happy. And yesterday I was having my obligatory second cup of coffee in the afternoon and I looked at my cup and then I started thinking about all of the different drinks that I've made in my past as a barista and that I consume myself. I'm just like, oh my gosh, these all have like personalities <laughs> and, and I could do a tag with this. And then my brain just went off. There are 13 prompts <laughs> to this tag. Please do not feel like you have to use all of them pick and choose the ones you want add your own if your little heart desires combine them if you feel a deck fits more than one prompt for you personally do do you do you boo do do your thing with this um do whatever you like um i do have a deck for all 13 so i will be presenting <laughs> 13 decks <laughs> oh, i'll see if i make it out alive I am not restricting this to one particular type of deck. I'm including multiple types, tarot, oracle, and other. If you want to do just one type, feel free to do so. If you want to mix it up, do that. Like I said, do, just, just do, whatever, do whatever you want. Let's get this cup of joe started. Prompt number one is the espresso shot. A deck that's strong, punchy, and gets straight to the point. It means business. My espresso shot deck was a completely obvious choice for me. This is the ancient Italian tarot. This is a low scarabeo deck. This was the deck that kickstarted my love of the old Italian decks. And for me, this is the one that is just incredibly reliable as far as if I need some insight and I just want something clear and concise, this is absolutely the deck that works for me and this death card brings me so much joy. Just sweeping up all the material excess. <laughs> anyway, um, this is my kind of short sweep to the point deck and look at that tower. That tower is beautiful. The majors are Soprafino based. The minors are Avondo based. So it is a bit of a mishmash of um, Italian, old Italian decks. And I love the backs. They're some of my favorite. This deck is mass market and widely available. And for me, it is my espresso shot deck, my strong punchy and straight to the point ancient Italian. Prompt number two is the drip, a deck that's simple, accessible, and gets the job done. Keep it simple, sweetheart. Although I was reluctant to include a traditional RWS deck in this tag, for this prompt in particular, it is the most obvious and accurate choice for me. This is the borderless centennial edition of the RWS with Pixie's original line work and font. It is published by US Games. And really, in all actuality, if I just need something quick and something I can interpret without any kind of muddiness, this is a deck that can get the job done for me for that purpose. And I have carried it around an awful lot this year. This was my first deck and it does bring me some comfort from time to time. Once again, the Borderless Centennial RWS published by US Games. Prompt number three is the pour over. A deck you need to take your time with, but it's totally worth the effort.
This deck is somewhat difficult to put into words just because it is so incredibly unique. This is the Philarcos Tarot by Carmen Sorrenti. This deck for me is unique in that the majors are actually a little more straightforward than the minors. The minors have, in addition to the imagery, a lot of incorporated small bits of text throughout. And you can spend a lot of time just picking that text apart in relation to how you would interpret that card and the imagery that's on it. This magician also is unique in that there is both uh, masculine and feminine energy present. This deck for me has a ancestor kind of energy to it and this justice card in my deck inventory I went into that card a little bit further and basically how it was the reason why I bought the deck and why. The backs are very gorgeous. This deck is a work of art but you have to really sit with it for a while and that's why for me it was kind of the obvious choice for the pour over deck. Philarcos Tarot, Carmen Sorrenti. Prompt number four is the Cafe Latte, a deck that's well-received and highly palatable. In my own experience and from the experiences that I've heard and read of others, there's something about this deck that just makes it special as far as how people react to it. In fact, I've read things by other people and heard things from other people about how they didn't really uh, mesh with tarot until they saw this deck. This deck, of course, is the Light Sears Tarot by Chris Ann, published by Hay House. This deck is just, for me, it has a warm and open, like you're chatting with a friend kind of energy. And I've heard that from several others as well, and I think that's part of the reason why it's just kind of loved by so many people. I have edged mine. This is the mass market version. I have ma edged mine to kind of mesh with that corner of the box there in color. My cafe latte deck is the light series by Chris Ann. Prompt number five is the cappuccino, a deck that's classic, sophisticated, and maybe even a bit fussy. After I wrote this prompt, this was the one and only deck in my library that popped into my head for the Cappuccino deck. This, of course, is the Pagan Otherworlds Tarot by Usi. I call the Cappuccino deck classic, sophisticated, and maybe a bit fussy. And for me, this deck fits all of that criteria in its own way. It is a modern deck, but for me, it's a modern classic. It is loved and highly regarded by so many tarot readers. It has this air of next level to it, which for me um, is kind of why I call it sophisticated. And it is a little bit fussy in that although this linen cardstock is absolutely spectacular, it can be a bit slippy when you are handling it and working with it. I, of course, don't let that stop me. I have the um, accompanying guidebook that goes with it. This deck is extraordinary. I'm actually thinking of trimming the sides of mine down just to make it easier to handle. Peg Another Worlds by Usi. Prompt number six is the Mocha, a deck that's rich, indulgent, and a bit extra much like this tag. For the Mocha, I have chosen a deck that everything about it screams lush. <laughs> it's, it's design, it's production, it's history, it's materials. Everything about this deck is just tactilely superb. <laughs> this is the Tarocchi Fina della Torre in Bologna and it is published by the Museo Internazionale dei Tarocchi. Apologies to any Italian native speaker to whom I may have just offended with that pronunciation. This deck is absolutely spectacular. 
it has some of the most amazing production I've ever seen. And another death card that just fills me with joy. The happy, jovial death cards. I love them. They make me so happy. Hopefully in that previous clip, you were able to hear the luscious sound of that paper. The backs of this deck are fascinating and that the design is horizontal rather than vertical. It does come in a really nice quality um, tuck box with an accompanying, although brief, quite good and concise history of the deck and its production. My tuck box has kind of been through the ringer because I've been in this deck a lot as of late. And I did order directly from the Museo Internacional de Toroki. The Toroki Fina della Torre and Bologna for the mocha. Prompt number seven is the Cortado, a deck that's balanced and objective. For my Cortado, I've actually chosen a system rather than a deck, but I'm using the Pixies Astounding Lenormand to represent the system of Lenormand and how I have been utilizing Lenormand lately in reading a Grand Tableau, like for pretty much anything. I don't do it often, I do it sparingly. But I mentioned in my deck inventory how Lenormand had become frustrating for me because of the, the, the rigid structure of learning the card combinations. And for me, that's just not how my brain works. And one day I just decided to lay a grand tableau and then all of a sudden Lenormand made sense. And it is balanced and it gives me kind of that impartiality that I look for and I can see the big picture all at once. So for me, Lenormand is my Cortado. Prompt number eight is the Campana, a deck that puts you in your place, but with a hint of sweetness. Like my cappuccino peg in other worlds, my choice for the Campana was a completely obvious one. This is the answer is Simple Oracle by Sonia Choquette, originally published by Hay House, and I believe now it is actually out of print, which still just completely astounds me. This deck will tell you how it is, like get over yourself, while being incredibly adorable. I remember when I first got this deck, I lovingly referred to it as a birthday cake in a box, just because aesthetically it has that, it has that energy, but it will just give it to you straight, but remind it, but remind you that, but look how cute I am, <laughs> you know, and not everything is an emergency. So, you know, chill and I just, I love this deck so much. It's, it's one that just offers straightforward advice, but softens the blow just a little. The answer is simple by Sonia Shiklet. Prompt number nine is the chai latte, a deck that's warm, cozy, and nurturing. Warm and fuzzy. I had a few decks under consideration for the chai latte, but in the end, the Vintage Wisdom Oracle by Victoria Mosley and published by US Games, won out just because when I got it out, I was taken back to November of 2021 when my dad was hospitalized with the Delta strain twice. And it was kind of serious at one point. And I used this deck a lot during that time. And it brought me so much comfort and it was just so incredibly on point and brought the feelings out that were just below the surface but didn't want to come out but this deck brought them out and helped me deal with them and it's just it's warm and nurturing and it has kind of a grandma energy as well for me too once again the vintage wisdom oracle by victoria mosley for the chai deck prompt number 10 is the matcha latte, a deck that's an acquired taste, or a bit unconventional. So relatable. 
For the matcha latte, I decided to whip out my Universal Worth Tarot just because we should talk about Utes Picard minors in relation to being a bit of an acquired taste or unconventional. Utes Picard minors are totally different in that the suit of swords, as you can see here, the two of swords totally submerged in water because the swords are water not air. And the cups are air and not water. And you might notice that this card looks different because I'm in the process of trimming this deck down, but I'm taking my time with it. Just getting to know that queen of cups is gorgeous. Just getting to know the cards and just going through that process kind of as I go. And the backs didn't actually turn out too badly. But yeah, the Hughes Picard Miners are very specific. They're very different. And these majors are worth inspired, which is also a bit on the um, kind of lesser known unconventional side. This is a low Scarabeo deck. It is beautiful. Universal worth for the matcha latte. Prompt number 11 is the hot chocolate. A deck that speaks to a younger version of yourself. Oh, where's my jump rope? From my hot chocolate deck, I chose a tarot that came into my life at the very beginning of this year. This is the Mara Loon Tarot. This tarot is not exactly childlike, but it has an innocence and a softness that kind of reminds me of feelings and emotions and experiences that I had when I was younger. One design aspect of this tarot that I really like is that the knights are more up close and personal. And for me, knights are the fire of their suit. And that closeness kind of um, depicts that intensity for me really, really well, but in a softer, more subdued way. And that three of swords is amazing because it offers opportunity for expansion on that interpretation. And this eight of cups is probably my favorite eight of cups in any RWS base deck that I have or that I've seen. This is just a great all around softer deck. It comes with a really nice little, um, it's simple and concise, but it's actually quite good. And I'm rather fond of this little white book. And I have the Game Crafter version that has the linen cardstock and it comes in a really nice roomy tuck box. And it is 79 cards because it does have an alternate lover's card. Once again, this is the Mara Loon Tarot and it is my hot chocolate deck. Prompt number 12 is the Italian Soda. A deck that's fun, low-key, and not overly serious. For my Italian soda deck, I pulled out the tarot that when I first got it, it reminded me, for some reason, of a root beer float. And so I guess the association between root beer float and Italian soda is not too terribly far off. This is the adorable, colorful just delightful Marseille styled tarot classic. This is an older vintage US games deck. It is out of print, but you can find them relatively easily. I found mine on eBay for a really, really great price. And this deck for me is just fun and lighthearted. Like look at that justice face. It's like cotton candy almost in a box. And it comes with this really cool old card for advertising other s products. And I just love that. The backs remind me of cotton candy. They have that cotton candy hue. But this is just a fun and lighthearted tarot. And the readings I get from it are always quite uplifting, which I really do appreciate. Really cool older tuck box. Once again, this is the Tarot Classic Older US Games deck. And last but certainly not least, prompt number 13 is the herbal tea, a deck that takes things down a notch or helps you unwind. For my herbal tea deck, I chose an oracle that I often like to take out, not even necessarily read with, but sometimes just look through in the evening at the end of the day before I start getting ready for bed. 
This is the Oracle of the Roses by Sherilyn Darcy. It is a rock pool published deck. This is a deck, as the title might suggest, of roses. And I originally got this deck to connect with Venus energy because I associate roses with Venus and I like to work with deity and symbols. That being said, this quickly turned into a deck of family and ancestor connection for me. And I went into that a little bit further also in my deck inventory video, which I will link. The backs are gorgeous. This deck is unique in that it can also serve as work with archetypes because each rose represents an archetype. Oracle of the Roses by Sherilyn Darcy. I had so much fun making this video. <laughs> I, I, I can't words cannot describe how, how enjoyable this entire process was. I just I just had such a good time and I'm hoping someone somewhere might enjoy it and maybe do a VR. I would love to see what people come up with for these prompts. I had so much fun writing them and so much fun choosing decks to go with them. This whole thing was just it was a good time. It was a good time. Good time for sure. <laughs> so um, that's it for this one. So until my next video, take care, be well.